Greetings fellow hunters, I'm PvP Skills. I love everything From Software does. I love their games, I share my thoughts on their games. And today we're gonna be looking at the one and only Katana in Bloodborne. If you're not familiar with previous From Software games, they usually tend to love their Katanas. So much so that with every installment, they, ha they have to include a top tier Katana. In Bloodborne, the Katana is called Chikage. I believe that's the way it's pronounced, but I might be wrong. From what I researched, the word Chikage is a very uncommon name for girls in Japan. Regardless, the word sounds cool and is befitting name for this weapon. Before I start dissecting this weapon, I really want to say that this weapon is my favorite until now. It is unique in many aspects and is one of the more powerful weapons that I tried in this game. In this video, I will share my thoughts about this weapon and share hints and tips on how to use it optimally and after that we proceed to look at fights and invasions. All the builds shown in this video are in the level range of between 45 and 70. This is where I get the most PvP action. I felt it was a full build at that range although most people go for level 100 for PvP. I will level up this character to 100 and share it in the future in a different video. So where do you get this weapon? You get this weapon after you beat Martyr Lugarius, I, th I think that's what he's called, <laughs> in Kanehurst Castle. After you defeat him, equip the crown he drops so you can join the Vileblood Covenant. Whilst joining the Bla Vileblood Covenant, you will receive a badge that will unlock the weapon in the Merchant in the Hunter's Dream. It costs about 50,000 Blood Echoes I believe, I'm not sure which is pretty darn expensive if you ask me. This weapon is definitely one of the harder weapons to get in Bloodborne, especially that most weapons can be found very early in the game. Before we start looking at the stats, let me read the description on the weapon. Foreign made weapon wielded by the Royal Guard to protect Annalise. I'm sure I pronounced this wrong. Queen of the Vilebloods at Kanehurst Castle. When the intricate, rippled engraving that spans the Kishikage's blade is imbrued with blood, the sword sings in scarlet hues. However, the right eats away at the wielder's very essence. So let's start with the stats. The Chikage requires 10 in strength, 14 in skill, and 12 in blood, uh, blood tinge. And it has a scaling of E in strength, B in skill, S in blood tinge, and D in Arcane, if you ever want to, you know, change it to Arcane damage, it'll have D uh, scaling. So it is a Blood Tinge slash skill weapon. But here is the catch. All other weapons in Bloodborne that have Blood Tinge attack rating always translate to the power of the bullets when you shoot with these weapons, such as guns and some weapons like the Rifle Spear, which can shoot when pressing the strong attack. But as for the Chikage, it follows different rules. The Blood Tinge attack rating actually translates with its attack and with its top tier scaling for Blood Tinge, it can dish tremendous amounts of damage. So, when does it deal the Blood Tinge damage, you ask? Well, the Chikage has two modes. The first one, when it's one-handed, deals physical damage and the damage scales with your skill stat. The other mode, beast mode I would like to call it, is when you transform it and two-hand it and that's when it deals blood tinge damage and scales off your blood tinge stat. I really love this unique aspect of the weapon and it is a, the first of its kind from From Software games. It separates the scaling depending on the mode you're using. This adds a layer of versatility that is clever and can be utilized in so many different situations. When it's two-handed, aka beast mode, you will lose HP at a rate of 0.85% of HP per second. Fortunately, the damage in this mode just flat out negates the HP loss. The damage is just good as fuck. There is no other way to put it. Moreover, the HP loss is not significant and won't stop you from literally obliterating your opponent. In 
this build, I had 17 skill and anywhere from 27 to 34 blood tinge depending on what level I was at the time. Both modes share the same moveset I believe, but the two-handed mode has the extra L2 attack, which can be very good especially in PvE. Fortunately, the moveset is not god tier like other From Software katanas in other games. It has less range than most weapons and its tracking is not that great. I fully recommend to learn how to use this weapon while unlocked. It's just so much better that way. The hitbox just flat out becomes much better for unknown reasons, but it's also easier to aim your attacks while unlocked. Trust me, if you learn how to play with it unlocked, you will find yourself hitting your target much, much more often. The beloved running thrusting attacks from Souls is still here, in the form of running R2. However, both of the slashing and thrusting running attacks are delayed. So if you're planning to hit your target with these attacks, you should initiate the attack way before you reach your target. The running thrusting attack is still very useful though, regardless of the delay. My most favorite attack is definitely the transforming attack, and that is when you press L1 when one-handed then press R1. You only have a few seconds after you press L1 to initiate this attack. This attack basically is a slash attack that pushes you forward and it has a lot of range, covers a lot of area, and most important of all, it deals a shit ton of damage. That forward push can be deceptive for your opponent since they think you're out of range. On the other hand, people are becoming familiar with this attack and it, be and it can be counter shot easily, so use it smartly and in moderation. Everything is good in moderation, we all know that. So essentially, if you want to be successful or a beast with this weapon, you should learn when to switch modes. You should one hand when you're out of range to stop the HP drop and two hand when you start your assault. And as soon as you back up, you go back to one hand. You can't use your gun in beast mode, so you have to one hand if you are planning to get a visceral attack. What I really really love about this weapon is it has a high learning curve. So before you start laughing, let me explain. I know that isn't the case against PvE and new players since R1 spam can be rewarding against those, trust me, I know. But I'm talking about against good PvP players that there's plenty of, I know that as a fact, that have the ability, these PvP players have the ability to dash a quick step like a cheetah or run away like a monkey. So back, for, back to the high learning curve topic, it can be difficult to hit competent players with this weapon, trust me. But if you master it, such as playing unlocked, it can be tremendously rewarding. I do not reflect that in this video since these clips are mostly when I started using this weapon. Some people say that this weapon is overpowered, which I generally disagree with, but it is very powerful and you can make an overall top-notch build with it, especially for PvP. It's possible that's the reason why it's very popular in this game. So back to the moveset, the R2s are actually different between the two modes, so sorry about that previously when I said they are identical in every way. So when one-handed, you do a slow thrust with no follow-up attacks. When I first tried it, I thought it had... It had little to no utility, but as usual, I was wrong. True, it has little utility, but it does provide good range and higher than average damage. It can prove useful when using it as your initial attack, when your opponent is approaching, you then follow up with R1 attacks, or you can end your combo with it when your opponent is trying to flee and catch them through their dash. Ah! 
You can also use this trick when you press up on the D-pad, you know, when you want to get some bullets. You can after that immediately attack your opponent and regain your HP back. So yeah, that's a small tip to add. And back to the moveset, the L2 when two-handed can prove useful from range. It starts with a slow thrust attack, similar as the R2's one-handed version. But this one does have follow-up attacks, unlike, you know, the one-handed version. It is hard to hit people with, but if you do, it will definitely deal a huge amount of damage. Another thing that makes using this weapon and tailoring a build around it very powerful is that you will have high blood tinge, which in turn makes your guns very, and I reiterate, very goddamn powerful. You can easily notice that if you were using this build. Your guns become truly a second weapon, that will make your journey in Yarnham much more pleasant. This is even more true in PvP, since most builds using other weapons have lower blood tinge. Their weapons are a means of support and not damage. But this, with this build, boy oh boy, your gun does significant damage. And all guns get a significant boost in damage, especially blood tinge dependent guns such as the Evelyn, which not too surprisingly can be found in Kanehurst Castle 2, making that area a must go for blood tinge builds. Combining Bone Marrow Ash with Evelyn gives you the ability to cut down bosses as if you were in Call of Duty, and one shot people with it as if you did a 360 no scope shot from across the map. I did this personally to uh, I did this personally. I one I one shot someone with it, which I will show in my invasions video. So the point here that I'm trying to make is using this weapon opens up other lethal arsenal to complement your build and make life much more easy, easier. Another interesting property on this weapon is that special attacks animation and animations that you can do with your guns translate to the two-handed blood tinge version of the Chikage. For example, when you shoot dogs or spiders, in the game of course, they will fall down. This can be replicated with the two-handed version of the Chikage because of its blood tinge attack rating similar to guns. This can prove useful sometimes and not too useful in others. So yeah, this is, this, is, this is a neat little quirk that this weapon possesses. <music> to top things up, the gym imprints on the standard Chikage are definitely my favorite. In case you don't know what gym prints are, the blood gems you put on your weapons come in different shapes. The shapes are radial, triangle, waning, circle, and droplets. The standard Chikage has two radial slots and one triangle slot. Both of these can be formed easily from chalice dungeons. I'm specifically talking about top tier gems like the ones I got on my quality build, quality build which I will showcase soon. In this video, I was using two 18% physical attack up gem and one 19.8% attack up gem. So they are not the best, but still, pretty damn good. Another interesting trait on this weapon is that the blood gem that increases physical attacks also equally increase blood, blood tinge attacks. This really makes it very convenient and basically both of these damage types are treated equally and the same. One of the other Chikage versions that you find in Chalice Dungeons, either the Lost version or the Uncanny version, has the same gym slot as the one that you get from the gun, which increases blood tinge attacks significantly. However, until now I think the standard version is best since you can get cursed gems from the chalice dungeon that gives you an extra 27 points, uh, 27% physical damage which with the Chikage it will also simultaneously increase blood tinge attack. The highest blood tinge gem I found personally was 25% 
There might be much higher, but remember that these gems increase blood tage attack exclusively. So this is the end of the Chicago review. I really appreciate you guys for watching this video until now and thanks so much for tuning in. My next two videos are almost done and will be released soon so if you want to watch more videos on this channel make sure to hit the red subscribe button so you don't miss out on my Bloodborne and Dark Souls 2 content. Thank you very much for watching. See ya on my next video. Peace.